Hello there, my name's Gina Gardner. I want to talk to you about taking the bullshit out of New Year's resolutions. You know, many people set New Year's resolutions and yet the research demonstrates that within a week, probably about 75% of New Year's resolutions have been broken and within a month, over 95%. Now, lots of people see it as a bit of a joke, but the reality is that behind that joke, they really want to make those changes. There's so much BS around New Year's resolutions. I want to take you through just a few examples. Why is it that we set New Year's resolutions on January the 1st? Because ultimately, today is the beginning of the rest of your life, and tomorrow is the beginning of the rest of your life. And yet we make a big thing about making New Year's resolutions on January the 1st knowing pretty well that the chances are we won't keep them. I'd like you to ask yourself, when you think about New Year's resolutions, if you were going to set them, are they the same ones that you would have previously set on New Year's Eve last year? Let me ask you, if you think about setting New Year's resolutions for this coming year, 2023, are they the same resolutions that you were thinking about setting in 2022, 2021, 2019, 2018? Because when I talk to clients so often, well, I want to lose weight or I want to give up smoking. I want to eat less sugar or less meat. I want to drink less alcohol. I want to give up something. Or I want to do more of something and take more exercise. I want more fun. I want more love in my life. I want a better relationship. Those resolutions have within them a kernel of something that's really important. And yet we let them go. How many times have you done it yourself or you know of people? I'm going to start a diet and I'm going to start it on Monday. Monday comes, they're really good. Tuesday, they go into the office, somebody's got a birthday and there's a beautiful birthday cake there. I'll just have a slice. They have a slice, they then feel guilty, but I'm gonna start my diet next Monday. So there's no point in carrying on this week, I'll do it on Monday. And so they continue with the pattern of eating in the same way that they have done that's caused the weight. They wait till Monday and then Monday comes, and during that week, they might manage a few days, they might even manage a week or a fortnight, but then something will happen and they'll fall off the wagon. And once they've fallen off the wagon, they don't immediately go straight back on it, they wait. And then because they wait, oh, well, I've broken it now, I might as well have another one, and then another one. And whilst in the moment of eating it or drinking it, they feel okay. Afterwards, there's recrimination, there's the feeling bad, there's the guilt, the shame, and so on. So, is your New Year's resolution, or you're choosing not to do a New Year's resolution, there again and again and again, but there are things that you really want to change? The reality is that unless you change the conditioning, the beliefs that underpin those behaviours, your thoughts, your actions, your words, unless you change the whole nine yards, then you are very unlikely to succeed. Those beliefs are driving your thoughts and your thoughts are driving your belief. It's a two-way process. They drive your thinking, your language, your actions. For the most part, 95% of us are unconscious. And so we're not even aware that we're having a pattern over and over and over again. And that's the other BS, is that the sense that we've got no control over it. The control comes with awareness, but often we're not aware of it ourselves. Those patterns are hidden in plain sight. So you may very well be BSing yourself. Well, I can't do anything about it, I've got big bones. Or I'm stressed and so I need to do this. Or I can't afford it, or I haven't got time. You'll find an excuse, make no mistake, I've heard all of them. So 
don't BS yourself that you are trying if you're not. Trying is an interesting word. If I ask you to try and move the pen, there's that point when it goes from an attempt to actually moving it. And many people get caught in the BS of trying. Either do it or don't. But don't kid yourself that you're going to when you know jolly well that either you're going to do it and not carry it on or you're not going to do it at all. Be honest with yourself. Don't BS yourself because in doing so, you keep yourself stuck. I was working with a young man not that long ago and he had been stuck in his bedroom for five years. And we were working together and we'd got him out of the bedroom and he'd come to, to my house to have his sessions, which was in itself an achievement. And every one of his sentences started with either Abba or no, I can't. I said to him, I just want you to recognise the pattern. I've noticed that every time you start a sentence, you're already setting it up to be an excuse that you can't. Now, he was a bright lad, but he hadn't been to school since the age of 13. He'd been homeschooled for a couple of years and he wanted to go to university. And I said to him, you know, if you don't actively change, if you keep BSing yourself, by the time you're 60, you'll still be BSing yourself. Your parents won't be able to support you. What are you going to do then? His response to me is, you're being a bit harsh, aren't you? And I said, am I? If you don't change, what will the reality be? And I'm going to ask you the same question. Now, I have no doubt that your situation is not as extreme as his. However, your behaviours, your language, your thinking, your emotional state is determining the quality of your life. Do you love your life? All of it? Do you want more love in your life? Then you need to deal with the relationship you have with you. If you want greater health in your life, then you need to think about what you're eating and drinking and how you're behaving. If you want more success in your business, then you certainly got to take the BS out of your leadership. Lastly, and I think the biggest BS that we give ourselves is that you can do it by yourself. And some people can, but they're few and far between. And so my challenge to you is, if you can do it by yourself, then why haven't you done it? Because patently, if you're listening to this, the chances are there is something you want to work on, but you haven't done it. So why not reach out for help? Now, I've created a lot of products to help. There are books. So if you're concerned about your health, for example, your life in their hands, where does the responsibility lie? It's a workbook. And all of these are intentional journals or workbooks. So they set up a principle and then they give you the opportunity to work on that principle, embedding it in your life for the next 30 days. If you're someone who's got long-term illness or disability, including long COVID, or you have that you're supporting, then there is a book to help you get out of the BS that you're a victim to your illness or your disability. I've had long-term disability. I'm a wheelchair user. I can now walk short distances, but I've been wheelchair bound for years at a time. I've had problems with chronic fatigue. I know that I am not my illness. I am not going to have my life defined by my illness or my disability. And so that's a book which is all designed to help you be the best physically that you can be and for your helpers to help you in a way that is empowering rather than keeping you playing small. Now, if you're a leader, then I think it's time to be taking the BS out of leadership. There's a talk and there's a book that is available and that comes from my work since 2004, working with business leaders, helping them take the BS out of their leadership. And in doing so, all of them making their business far more profitable, better relationships, more productivity, better work-life balance. And this is a book that can take you through some of the common BSs that get in the way of you being a great leader. I think one of the areas that many people are not 
thinking about is them as spiritual beings. And ultimately, I think we need to take the BS out of being a human doing rather than a human being. Very few of us are human beings, most of us, me included, until I became much more aware of what that meant, get stuck into the BS of we've got to be busy rather than being productive, rather than seeing ourselves as a spiritual being using our inner wisdom and intuition and our connection to consciousness. And I've created a couple of other books to help you. One is about the true essence of you and the other is how I do it, my garden insights to the window of my soul. Those books are there to help you. But if you really want to get started, I'm offering a special deal over the holiday, which is a 90 minute deep dive to help you create a plan to help you get out of the quicksand of BS and into making 2023 the best year ever. You'll find details of that in the description. And I really look forward to helping you. Whatever happens, 2023 is going to come and go. But what sort of a year is it going to be for you? Are you going to focus on all the things you can't do? Or are you going to make this is the year where you truly take responsibility for your life and you make a difference? My name is Gina Gardner. I'd love to help you. You'll find the books on Amazon and you'll find the details for the 90 minute deep dive in the description. Take care now and happy new year.